and welcome to another episode of Instant Impact with Elise Archer. I'm your host, Elise, and I am coming to you from Miami today. I am here for a conference. Um, I braved all of the coronavirus fear and <laughs> news and got on the plane and got myself in the room for an event um, with my coach. And I tell you what, today's podcast is not about the power of live events, but here's what I will say, um, just as I record this intro, if you are really wanting to up-level your life and your business, um, there's nothing like the power of being live in the room with other people who are going after what you're going after to really do that and do it quickly. I got some major downloads, major ahas today about just some old money stories that I had and things that were really no longer serving me in terms of how I show up and some ways I was limiting myself in how I show up as well. So I'll probably do another episode about those um, when I'm a little bit farther from them. I think when you are leading anything, whether it's, you know, you've got a presence on Instagram or you're doing a podcast or any sort of content creator, the place where you can be most helpful and most valuable um, is when you are on the other side of processing some things. So there is value to sharing in the moment. And there is also a lot of power to sharing from a place of perspective when you've worked through something. So I will, as I now have some new awarenesses about myself, I will be working through them and sharing them with you on an upcoming episode when I can add more insight. But you know, the point of this is really get yourself in the room for whatever the 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 areas that you're focused on in your life right now you know if it's your business we've got some incredible events coming up at brand builders group uh, where people are having just major breakthroughs on how to grow their business their brand their following and would love to invite you to some of those you can always email me and my team elise Elise at brandbuildersgroup.com. I almost forgot my email address there for a moment. Elise at brandbuildersgroup.com. And um, we can connect with you to see if there's an upcoming event that would be good for you or whatever the thing is that you're focused on. If you're focused on your health, get yourself in the room for that. If you're focused on you know, your relationship, get yourself in a room for that. But there's just quantum leaps that happen at these events. And so I really just want to encourage you that there is nothing more important than investing in yourself and believing in yourself enough to show up, book the plane ticket, do the thing, um, and be there in the room for your transformation to happen. So with that, speaking of transformation, my guest today, Regina Lawrence, is really an expert at creating transformations for other people. She's a business coach, and she helps soulful entrepreneurs and business leaders really bring more of themselves into their business and then build and scale from there. And part of why I wanted to have her on is she has a, just a story of finding herself and she'll share it on the podcast, but kind of going after the thing that she wanted, she thought she wanted and needed to be successful, the corporate job, um, doing all the things that she thought she was supposed to do and finding herself completely burnt out. And that is so aligned with my story and a lot of what I went through um, before I exited corporate in 2015 and started my own business. And, you know, this podcast, in the podcast, we talk about reinvention. And if you're at a point where you're ready to reinvent yourself, how can you do that in a way that's sustainable? How can you do it in a way that feels good? And how can you do it in a way that really serves your soul's higher purpose and calling in the next iteration of whatever you're meant to do? And this podcast is for you, whether you are an entrepreneur, a side hustler, or you're W2 and you're not looking to make a reinvention in your business necessarily, but maybe there's another part of your life that you want to. But the biggest thing that I've found has really been transformational in my life in the past, I'd say, you know, five or so years is learning to bring more of myself and my soul into everything that I do, including my business. And so I really wanted to dig in with Regina on how to do that. And she's going to share some tactical tips. She's going to share some steps that she took, and she's going to share some really powerful mindset shifts and um, yeah, mindset strategies that you can incorporate into your business and into your life, wherever you are at, if you're poised for a reinvention. So I think you're going to love this episode. I just fell in love with Regina and kind of her mindset and what she has to share in this podcast. And so without further ado, let's welcome Regina Lawrence to the show. Regina, it's so good to have you on the podcast. I mean, just in the couple of minutes of chatting together before we uh, hit record here, I feel like you're my soul sister. Like I can tell we have so much in common and I'm so excited to have you here. So thank you so much for making the time to join me on the show today. 
thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to chat about all the things with you. Yes. So I want to get into, we're going to get into over the course of the episode, a lot of what you teach and coach your clients on. But before we do that, I understand that your personal backstory seems like it really lends itself to what you're doing now and what you're passionate about. So could you share with us a little bit of your backstory for people who don't know you of how you got into this work and why you do what you do? Absolutely. So my backstory is prior to being a business coach, I was an attorney. I was a trial attorney and a litigator. I did that for seven years and I was also a law school pr professor. Mm -hmm. um, the way that I became an attorney at a base level is that I am a compulsive high achiever from pretty traumatic childhood background. And I wanted to create a life that was different than the life I grew up in. Mm -hmm. And I propelled myself through being the type A, Virgo, red person mm -hmm. to do all the things and to push myself through school because I felt like that was what I had to do, right? Like I needed to get the good job. I needed to be in a good profession. I needed to make money. I needed to change the trajectory of my life. So I was always a very stressed and anxious person. And I used that to propel me for the good, like to accomplish things and to change my state and to change my life. Um, but I got to this point in practice where, you know, I was doing all the things I had, was doing work for a really big client. I was stressed and anxious all the time. And I had this moment in my office where I'm doing work for a client and it was really prestigious work. Nobody was allowed to touch it except for me and a couple other attorneys. And I started to shake and I started to sweat and I was like, what's happening? Like, and I've had little panic attacks through my life. Um, but this was something very different. And I remember getting out of my office chair, closing the door and I laid on my office floor and like the visual, I'm in a pencil skirt, a pair of Louboutins and I put on a headspace meditation app and I, spread my arms out and I just lay there and I cried mm -hmm. and I was like laying on my office floor I'm like you are laying on your office floor you are 27 years old you have done everything that society sees as successful you have the life that people think that they want and you are on your office floor crying like mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm gonna do but my whole life is going to change after this moment and I got off the floor and I that moment like rapidly propelled like a journey of massive change for me. Mm, oh my gosh. I relate so much to what you're saying. That was a lot of my background, not in, not in law. I would feel really sorry for anyone I tried to defend. I'd be terrible at it but, <laughs> or prosecute. I'd be bad at it. <laughs> but just going after like the things that you think you're supposed to do to be, you know, to have achieved something and to have success and then to find yourself totally empty. How did, I'm kind of curious, like from the moment you got off that floor and started this journey, what were some of the changes that happened for you? Like, how did you start to kind of unravel where you had gotten yourself to at that point? One of the biggest things I've realized is like, we often think like, I am who I am and that's who I am. And so for me, I had this identity of like, I'm stressed and anxious. I'm like, that's just who I am. My mom's stressed and anxious. And so I started to really dive in first into a personal development world and also into a neurological reprogramming of the brain space, understanding that I have the ability and the power to change who I am, to change the, my patterns of thought, to change the to change the way I was raised, to undo the damage that was done in my most formative years. Once I started to read and understand that, one, it gave me so much power back to be like, mm -hmm. I'm not helpless. I'm not trapped in this body or trapped in this life. And I started to make those changes to my mindset. And I started to really commit every day throughout the day to change the inner dialogue. And it was a lot of work. It's a lot of work to change like a talk track that you have had since you were in the womb, um, maybe even that you've had from this life and life, lifetimes before this, if you believe in that. And so I really committed to that work. So I started really, just like I go to the gym every day, I started committing to my mind every day and really started to change there. I love that. What are, so what are some of the things that you did specifically? Did you, was it like affirmations, visualization, kind of walk us through? Cause I think I know you're a, you're a real expert when it comes to reinvention as well, which I think this is, it's like if somebody wants to reinvent themselves, it all starts 
in your mind, right? So um, I think the more like tactical and specific, maybe we can share some ideas. Totally. Listeners would be really helpful. I started to carve out space in my life for me. And I like to call it like the white space mm -hmm. because like I love to work out. That's me very meditative for me. Um, but I started to really carve out white space. So one of the things I did was affirmations and mantras. And, you know, for anybody listening, if you're not familiar with an affirmation, it's looking at an area of your life. So for me, for example, I was stressed and anxious and I created mantras around I'm peaceful. I'm peaceful and productive because in my life, productivity equals stress and chaos. So I'm peaceful. I'm in a peaceful body. I'm peaceful and productive. Something else I realized I also was doing is that we can say affirmations all day long, but if we don't believe that that's possible, we're just saying sentences with no energetic attachment to them. So I started to look for evidence in my life where I was peaceful and productive. Mm -hmm. And like, for example, like I look at times when maybe I gave myself a huge amount of time to write a brief for work and I was writing it with ease, drinking a coffee peaceful and productive, like calm. And I started to, to think about those times when I would say my mantra. So like I'm peaceful and productive or like people who want to make more money. Like I make money with ease. Money flows to me freely and with ease. I would start to say mantras like that and affirmations like that, but I would also like feel into and remember the times in my life where that happened, where money just showed up. And I was like, yeah, money shows up for me. Everything works out. And when you tie the mantra and the affirmation to an actual thing that you have felt the energy of and that you've experienced, that's where like you start to see the shift. So I started to do that. I got religious about mantras and affirmations. The other thing I did with mantras and affirmations is I decided from that moment forward that I would never speak bad or poorly about myself again. It doesn't matter if I'm having a good day, a bad day, whatever. No, we attract the energy that we put out into the world. So if we are constantly speaking down to ourselves, we are, we are going to attract that low vibration. So I made a commitment. I don't care how fat I feel. If I say it, I'm like, nope, girl, that ass helps you squat. It helps you do all the things. You look good in jeans, like whatever it is. And so those, the words, so for me, it came down to the words that I was saying and the thoughts that I was thinking. That was the first thing. And that's how I like tangibly did it. Oh my gosh. Yes. Cause there's, it's so true. It's like, we just, our words can uncover what's actually going on under the surface. But a lot of times it's just such a repeat loop, right? Where we don't even notice it or we don't even say it. And, um, you know, it's, 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 it's funny for me. I don't, and I don't know why this is showing up while you talk, but it is, it's, it, to me, it seems like there's this theme in your life that you probably help clients with as well of just releasing the shoulds, like letting go of the, I should be doing this. I should be doing that. Like to be productive, I should have every 10 minutes scheduled on my calendar or I, to be successful, I should, you know, be working in X, Y, Z type of corporate job. And it sounds like really just like getting into your own truth and your own power. And, um, for somebody who is, you know, who's maybe in the process of reinvention and is wanting to reinvent their brand, their business, their life, um, what are some other words of advice or tips or things you would tell them that you think would help somebody through that process? One of the biggest things is when you're going through that process of reinventing yourself, you have to give yourself massive permission to do the things that you want to do and to do the things that you feel called to do. No one is ever going to give you permission. When you want to change, when you want to shift, most of the people around you are going to be very resistant to you shifting and to you changing. We get annoyed with them. We're like, but look, I'm this is for the good. Like this is for the good. You actually have to give them grace and you have to say, I understand why you don't want me to change because change is really scary for the human person. The ego that, that is coming out of them, it just wants to keep them safe and it wants to keep me safe and they don't want me to change. So they're not going to give you permission. So for me, I gave myself massive, I have given myself massive permission to be whoever I am whenever I want. And that is a very imperfect perfect person who does a lot of crazy things and that's okay. I've given myself massive permission. And that has enabled me to be like, 
you are allowed to do this and you are allowed to do it in any way you want. And I don't need anybody else's support to make the shift and to make the pivots and to do the things. Wow. Do you find that's mainly with, um, with your female clients that they're looking for permission or do you find that it's that you see it with both sides? I think female clients more openly verbalize that they need permission, Mm -hmm. but we all need, we're we're all, we all want affirmation. We all want somebody to say you're doing a good job and maybe men seek affirmation in a different way than a woman might. Um, but men want somebody to pat them on the back and say, you're doing a good job too. in whatever form they need to receive that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true, true. Yeah. I was, um, I was at a conference last week that we were, we were hosting in Nashville for some of our clients. And it was just so interesting to me to listen to the language that, um, and it was specifically my women in the room. And I, I, I love my men and my women, but I was listening to some of the language that was being used when, when they wanted to ask a question. And it was like the, you know, men just ask the question, like, Hey, I've got a question on this. What's the, you know, help me out. And then the women I would hear so often, they would say, this is probably a stupid question, but, or I'm sorry to, I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm sorry to ask this question, but, and it was such a minimizing of who they were their int- They weren't dumb questions. They were legit questions. And so I think it's interesting to think about giving ourselves permission to stop apologizing to stop oh, yeah. seeking to be okay like with other people and so yeah it's it's it i think i see a, probably more with my female clients that they feel like they need you i've actually literally had people say i need you to give me permission to do this and maybe it is just that they are verbalizing it more but i love that you how did you give yourself permission was that like a reprogramming or did you just decide one day you were done with it start so it actually started interestingly enough when i was in practice I was noticing in court that women would be, would say sorry all the time. I noticed that women were constantly apologizing for existing. Mm. And I would see women say like, you know, the, uh, somebody would object and to something they were doing and the judge would rule in this female attorney's favor. And she would say, thank you, your honor. And so my students would do this because I was a law professor too. And my students would say, thank you, your honor. And I'd say, what are you thanking me for? I'm not doing you any favors. Stop Mm -hmm. thanking him for things. Stop giving you anything. Or they'd move around the courtroom or I'd see like, they'd move around the courtroom and be like, oh, I'm sorry, your honor. Oh, I'm sorry. And I'd stop them and say, what are you sorry for? Stop apologizing for existing. And I realized like that really brought an awareness to me that women are constantly apologizing for just taking up space. And, um, I went on a date not that long ago and the guy said to me, I've never seen a woman who is so unapologetic about the space she takes up in this world. Mm. And I love that because that's something I've worked so hard on. Like another example is when you go to the gym, you see women are so shy to get into the, I love to lift weights and you see women like they're shy to move around the weight section. I'm like, move out of the way. Like I'm here too, dude. And that's something I've kind of been like that a bit my whole life. I've always just been a up the personality that I am. I love it. Um, but I've also seen it with clients, especially with women and with lawyers and, you know, feeling like because of the patriarchy or because of childhood conditioning or whatever, they feel like they can't take up space. And I, like, one of my missions in life is to empower women to be like, you are here, you are taking up massive space and like you never apologize for it. Yes. Oh my gosh. I mean, we wouldn't be here if we weren't meant to take up space. Right. So it's, it's, it's like my opinion, my belief is God doesn't make extra humans. You're not here by accident. It's not a mistake. If you're here, you are here on this earth for a very specific purpose in time. You're here at this time for a reason as well. And so yes. just, I love the ownership of like, I'm here, let me at the weight rack, let me, like wherever you are and just own wherever it. I'm yeah. Yeah. And just mm-hmm. owning it. So for somebody who's going through like a pivot or a, a reinvention, I, I, I want to get into a little bit more of kind of the, the just tips, things they should be thinking about doing. Um, so we talked about really just like giving yourself full permission to do it and to be who you are. Any other words of wisdom or advice for somebody who is looking to reinvent where they are in life? I think aside from just like giving yourself permission, start to ask yourself the questions that you were never asked. So 
I like to talk about the fact that when we are raised and I see it in men and women, we're pretty much given like a track of like, this is what society sees as good. This is what a good education looks like. This is what a good job looks like. This is what a good partner looks like. And so I think a lot of times people get to this point, it used to be like a midlife crisis. Now we're seeing like a 30 year old crisis because people are waking up to the fact that they are actually in a body and in a life and in a relationship and in a career, whatever it is that they're unfulfilled with because they've never actually checked in with themselves to see what makes me happy. What do I love to do? What did my soul come here to do? And am I doing it? Like, what do I not like in life? So I say, if you're at a point of like reinventing yourself, of pivoting, of transitioning, start to ask yourself those questions and when you, the scary thing is this, when you start to ask yourself those questions and create space, the answer is going to come. And when the answers come, that means change could happen in your life and change is scary because of what we talked about earlier. But for me, I looked at my life and I was like, this is a long life to live. So I'm going to ask these questions and things are going to change. And I know mm -hmm. that, and that's okay because I know on the other side of that change, it's going to be something that is more fulfilling. So start to ask yourself questions like, what do I enjoy? What brings me happy? When I was a little kid, what did I want to be when I grew up and why? When I was a little kid, I wanted to be a celebrity. I wanted to be on stages and I wanted to be in front of people. Am I a celebrity? No. But give me a microphone, put me on stage and let me connect with human beings. And I am in my power and I am so happy. So check back in with those like little kid dreams and start just start to write about it and create space and really start to feel into like, what feels good? And, and how can I live a life that actually feels good? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. Absolutely. Well, and I, I think one of the things that people are probably afraid of, like I'm imagining, I would be afraid thinking through this. What if I ask the questions and it's the answers are totally different from what I'm doing in my life right now? Mm -hmm. Does that mean I have to make a drastic change in order for it to be effective? Or can I kind of ease into it? Like, what would you say to that? I'm all about easing into it. Sometimes you might be somebody listening and you need a massive change in your life. You need to wake up tomorrow and decide and change. A lot of people, you don't have to do that. You can, you know, it took me three years from that time I was on my office floor to leaving my legal practice. I gave myself three years. Mm -hmm. I felt into it. I really like, I prayed on it. I meditated on it. I did so much deep soul work like that. It took me three years. So you don't have to make a quick pivot, but through those three years, there were steps that I took, developing my mindset, reading, educating myself about what I wanted to do, starting to work with clients, pivoting in how I work with clients. Like I, every day I took action, but it was slow and it was gradual and it didn't overwhelm me, but it led to a, a, a three year, my life was 180 at the end of three years. I think it's so important that you bring that up because I think a lot of times the fear comes in from thinking, I'm going to have to change everything tomorrow. I'm going to have to you know, change my career. I don't know how I'm going to make money. I've got to change my relationship and it can feel so overwhelming. So you just never do anything. But the fact that you made it gradual and one step at a time, you ended up farther along, you know, three years out than you probably would have if you felt like you had to do it all at once. Because if yeah. you try to do it all at once, it's like you'll go into shutdown right? It'll just feel like way too much. So I think that's actually really useful to see someone like you who's on the other side of that and to say, look, it took three years, but it worked. And yeah. that you gave yourself permission to, to do it at a pace that felt right mm -hmm. and made sense for you too. You know, one of the other, I, I love this concept from your website of running a soulful business. And that's mm -hmm. one of the other things I wanted to talk with you about. What does that mean for you to run a soulful business? So for me, so I've, I'm a believer that, like you hinted to earlier, our soul is not here in this moment in time by accident. It is divinely orchestrated. And I believe that we have all come to this lifetime in this moment for, a very, for, for very distinct purposes, for things that we are here to do. For some people, maybe you were born because you ha you're having that baby that's going to do something in the world, or to, mm. just to be a mother to that baby and to foster that human being. Maybe you were born to, you know, be like Gabby Bernstein and be on stage and curate and connect with people. We all come for distinct purposes. So um, 
the way that I look at my life is I came here for a purpose, my soul's calling, and my business is in alignment with that calling. And maybe your calling isn't your job or maybe it's not your job or vocation, but you want a business that is still in alignment with that, that nurtures that. So you can do the things you came here to do. Hmm. What if we, what if we're running a business and things are going well and we don't necessarily feel like we want to make a change there, but we haven't necessarily thought about bringing more soul into the business. Anything that, that someone can be doing to add more soul, more of who they are into their existing business model? Yeah. I mean, when you are a business owner, your life and your business are essentially one in the same. Mm. So if you're in a business, like I just had a call with someone recently where she has a business, it's thriving. She's doing amazing. Um, but on a soul level, she's kind of struggling and she's struggling with finding her purpose and she's struggling with, you know, feeling fulfilled and all of the other things. So even if your business is good, if, if life can always be better, like, I'm a believer that like, we've never hit our peak. We can constantly get better and better and better. So if your business is great, there's always ways to check back in because maybe the business is good, but you check in on a soul level and you're like, Ooh, like this, why am I not having more fun? Why am I not doing, why am I not creating more space to spend more time with my spouse? Why am I not like, I've wanted to have a baby for years and like, I've been putting it off. Like, why am I doing that? Like, that's a fulfillment for my soul for me, whatever it is. Like we can always get better. Yeah. Yeah. I, I relate to everything you were saying. And that's actually something that came up for me last year was the concept of having fun in business, because I think my conditioning, because I came from a corporate background and then worked in a very structured, very disciplined, I was independent contractor and I became a partner in the company, but it was still a very structured, very regimented company where you know, every minute of every day needs to be filled with something very productive. <laughs> and it's like, you don't go home until you've hit your numbers and you feel ashamed if you don't. And, and so I came from that background and I had never, fun felt, it felt like a waste to me. It didn't yeah. feel like it should exist in my business. It was like, well, that's not how you get results. And it was actually reading um, Super Attractor by Gabby Bernstein. I read yeah. it three times in a row where she really talks about like the vibration of getting into fun and enjoyment and lightness with what you're doing. And I started just focusing on having more fun in my day, um, taking myself less seriously, enjoying what I was doing. And it's been it's been a big shift. It's, I think one of the biggest things I've noticed is I just don't get stressed out the way I used to mm -hmm. about things when you really believe that everything is happening for you and you just focus on having fun and know the natural attraction of that. Um, totally. And just yeah. laughter, like laughter changes the energy of everything. Like yes. I, you know, I used to have two speeds, like fun or like so serious. And now I figured out, like I was so conditioned to think like making money takes a lot of time. It takes serious effort. It's hard. It's, it's heavy. And now like, I just like to laugh about things and I like to work and collaborate with people who I laugh with. And I like stupid videos on the internet that like, and I love stupid memes. Like I laugh my butt off on Instagram and stuff. And like, I'm into it and I embrace it. Like, it's not silly. It actually raises my vibration. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. I, I so 100% agree. This is, um, this is so cool. And I think just getting to know you and getting to know your style, like someone who is really looking for a deeper level of support and up leveling in their life would really benefit from knowing you, from following you, from working with you. So tell, take a minute and just kind of tell us like the type of work you do, the type of clients you support and how people can connect with you if they want to learn more. Definitely. So I, I tell people that I'm a soulful business strategist. And what, what that means is, like I said earlier, I believe we've all come here for a purpose. And so I want people to create these heart-centered businesses or pivot their business or put their business in a place where they feel like a connection to it. So I really work with people on getting clear on, on that purpose and creating a business from that space. And then after that, what I do is I, I do what a traditional business coach does, but it's all keeping in mind like the, the purpose, the why, like the connection to the business. Um, and then we create the business. So I create their branding with them. 
Um, I help them really niche down to figure out who they're serving. And then every element of the business, the online marketing, I'm really big on in-person community building. Um, I te- that's like a superpower of mine. I, I help to teach and to curate that. Something that's a little bit different about me versus other business coaches is I don't teach a concept and then send you off on your merry way to do it. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of times when it's something so new, like creating a funnel for email addresses and creating an opt-in, that's scary and we procrastinate. So I actually co-create with my clients. So if you're creating a lead magnet to bring people into your space, we are going to either in person or get on a Zoom and we're going to jam out on the idea. We're going to create it together and you're going to have a live page on Kajabi when we're done. Mm -hmm. So that's something a little bit different. So I'm definitely... I'm definitely a right-brained, left-brained, masculine, feminine, spiritual, strategic coach, where I take you from a heart-centered place to masculine systems and structures, but keeping you in alignment the entire time. That is so awesome. It's everything. It's literally everything someone would need to build and grow their business. So that is awesome. Tell everyone where they can connect with you and where they can learn more if they want to talk with you about coaching. Definitely. So I spend a lot of time on Instagram these days. It's my favorite place to hang out. I'm like a Z-list celebrity, my friends say. I'm like, <laughs> I I'm love like, that. You're, like, you're, not, you're not famous. I'm like, on Instagram, I am. <laughs> I love the, you know, and I share a lot of my life on story and, and, in, and just in general. Yeah. Um, so Regina A. Lawrence is my Instagram handle. My website is reginalawrence.com. There's more information about my coaching. Um, But if you're interested, I'd love to offer a free coffee chat where we can dive in. I can learn about your business. I think a lot of times we don't know if somebody is the right coach for us until we've coached with them. So I like to offer a free coaching session so we can just kind of get to know each other, see if we energetically vibe, see how we can serve each other in this. Um, and you can schedule that through my website or just send me a DM on Instagram and we can schedule that way. Oh, so good. Thank you so much just for, for showing up in the way that you do and for owning your power and taking up space and showing other business leaders what's possible. So I so appreciate you being here today and just sharing your story and your background and have had so much fun connecting with you. And I know everyone is going to want to as well. So thank you, Regina. Thank you for having me and thank you for holding this space. I so appreciate it. Absolutely. Talk to you soon.